it's your girl Lauren Sizzle and Classy Lady Sparkle. And have you subscribed to our channel yet? If the answer is no, you need to subscribe now. Yeah, so stop what you're doing. Go right now mm -hmm. and subscribe. We like That's you. Right. You like us. So go ahead and subscribe. <laughs> Come on over. Be a part of the family of We Talk Weekly and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe now. <laughs>which is a big deal. You have to have purpose, drive. You have to know that what you're doing, there will be some reciprocity in karma and it will be paid back vividly and huge. Success, you say it, it shall be, and you put that energy out there in the universe. So without further ado, sis, who do we have today? Who do we have today? So we have Mr. Mark Havis. Mark Havis, get in. Marque, I got that right. <laughs> yeah, I need the applause. We have Mr. Marquavis Gideon. He is a native of Wilmington, Delaware, and is the founder okay. of Nerd It Now. At the age of 12, Marquavis was given the opportunity to work on computers when a teacher from Tally Middle School presented him with a room full of computers and told him to do with it as he pleases. That was just the beginning. Mark Havis would go on to attend the Computer Network Administration Program at Howard High School. And during this time, he was able to gain several Microsoft certifications mm. and work at MBNA. He would soon attend Widener University, where he began studying computer science and working 40 hours a week at Geek Squad. Today, Mark Havis ha, ha, is Best Buy. Cool. Shout out to... Ha, ha, that's what I'm talking about. Today, Mark Havis is back in Delaware and running his small business, Nerd It Now, with partners Jake Voorhees, a digital marketer, world-traveling filmmaker, TEDx producer, speaker, coach, and nonprofit officer, and Jonathan Hulkster. Hoxter. A University of Delaware graduate serving as Nerd It Now's financial director. Welcome to the show, Mr. Mark Cavis. Get it I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, my brother. How are you? Hey, bro, man. We out here. We live in life and we're just blessed. Blessed as all. So I appreciate the opportunity Love it. to come. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. The Geek Squad, shout out. Yeah. We not endorsing Best Buy. Not at all. I just would like <laughs> to say <laughs> that I am so, you know, the Geek Squad has helped me a lot with my computers oh, with man, viruses you, and all that. I just take them there and they handle think they yeah. helped you, brother. Man, yeah. see, so you, you just didn't come meet the nerds yet. Okay. See, we the ones that's going to really take care of you. Okay, here, <laughs> okay, no, no, okay, okay. That's what's up. So let's jump right into you. What got you into kind of like computer systems and and all of that good old stuff as it relates to putting that whole thing together. So as y'all briefly just heard, when I was 12 years old, right, um, right. coming from an underserved community, I didn't have any resources absolutely, that, um, provided absolutely. to me. But it was this one teacher, Jeffrey Epstein, who donated one laptop to me, which completely changed my life. Mm -hmm. Now, most individuals would have thought that I would like did my homework or did some programming type stuff. Instead, I would take it apart and put it back together. Mm. And people were like, yo, this kid is kind of good at this. So I kept doing it, doing it, doing it. He showed me a room full of computers and was like, yo, go at it. After a while, the guidance counselor was like, yo, I think you need to be going to this vocational school because oh, this good. right here is going to get you this the right skills to actually make you go further in life. Mm. And I kind of just went from it and strode from there. Fantastic. Wow. Because oftentimes, unfortunately, uh, them counselors be dropping a ball sometimes. And, you know, that they could have bust, burst your bubble and mm -hmm. sent you down a different path. But somebody seen something special in you and said, you know what, let's put some a little bit more. I see some type of talent. Yes, and what happens, especially with our, our young little boys out there, you know, sometimes they look at us and say, you know, he's a little too too busy, so he must have some behavioral needs. Not necessarily saying, you know what, we need to, you know, move his focus in another direction, you know. And so that's a good thing. Now, so let's move forward. Now you're doing a lot of things as it relates to this. You know, you got some partners and you're creating this empire, so to speak. How did you meet all your, your partners? 
So my partner's um, the first one, Jonathan Hotster. Okay. I actually met the kid when I was two years old. My man um, knocked out my front two <laughs> teeth in kiss- kindergarten. Wow. We never went to school afterwards, but uh, we maintained this friendship throughout our whole lives. And um, I known growing up with him that he was really good with um, management, a lot of financial um, backing. So all, our first business plan was written by Jonathan. Mm-hmm. Our first, um, our financials that helped us get our first loan, and all the pitching that we did. He manages all our financials and uh, making sure that the business plan is intact okay. to actually move forward. And last year, um, I was preparing to give a TEDx talk um, oh, down in Wilmington. I'm called, um, it was titled "Find Your China." But I met Jake Voorhees, and um, he helped coach me, um, telling my story to make it better, more appealing, and make a better impact within the community. Mm. And when I realized what he was able to do, I was like, you know, honestly, I wanted to start a second business anyway, okay. marketing. And I believe you're the one to do it with me. Mm. So we co-founded our second organization, Speaker Angel, which um, goes around and helps other speakers from underserved communities be able to share what they're trying to say and uh, make sure that whatever they're saying is going to have a huge impact within the community to help uplift people. Okay, no doubt. Well, you, maybe you can help us three right here to, you know, be our angels to go within the speaking realm, the speaking (laughs) world, you know? And so, okay, so that's great. So Speaker Angel, and uh, have you made any headway with that yet? Um, last week, I just was out in California where we coached um, individuals from Equifax, T. Rowe Price, Microsoft, wow. IBM. Um, there's about 20-something um, individuals where we're coaching them um, for another uh, a big opportunity they had out in um, California. So we were out there for three days, all paid expenses. Of course, we got paid in addition to that wow. just to make sure that um, they were able to share their stories, with, um, which relates to the organization, okay. and make sure um, it was just impactful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Another piece that's special to you is... Uh, one, you're okay. Let's talk about the computer labs that you're doing right now. I want to okay. go. I want to dive into that, and that's dear to me because of the nonprofit that we have, Project Steam, anyway, and making sure uh, these youth and people within these underserved community are competitive in a global economy as it relates to STEM, right? And right. us being uh, media artists, so to speak, we're able to tell that story visually, right? And so let's talk a little bit about your position in that STEM world, and what empowers you to do that? So right now, um, if someone came to you and said, you're not smart enough to go to college. Already been there. That right there is someone imposing a limitation to you out of hate. Absolutely. But then other people will come to you and say, are you sure you want to go to college? It's Ah, expensive. mm. It's hard. The person on your left or right might not make it. That's a limitation imposed onto you out of love. And what I try to do is make sure that I help people go past these 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 limitations imposed onto us right. to really find that ideal passion you have, or like I like to call it, find your China. Mm. And for me, what that looked like was one teacher giving me a computer right. when we didn't have the means to do it on our own. And that one computer completely changed my life. Right. To this day, we donate over 100 computers back into the communities each year. And we make sure that we have our IT company <laughs> doing big things. With all that being said, that would have never worked had we not had that one laptop donated to me. Wow. So I made it our mission to make sure that every year we're affecting 100 lives around the world wow. to make sure that they can get into a new, um, get a job, do find resume, scholarship, get into school, whichever have you. We want to make sure that we're making a bold impact throughout the world. Wow, mm. unbelievable. That's, that's huge. Why do you think it's so important for especially uh, those who are in need in these underserved communities to have access like that. Um, wh- where can you go without technology right now? Yeah. What can you do without technology? You you watch. Um, there's this one organization which um, we just donated 35 computers. Um, in Wilmington, and this organization, or they're they're taking these minority kids, um, brown, black kids, and they're sending them to the best colleges around the world, with no student debt, none. Mm-hmm. You're like, yo, these kids are going to MIT. Um, Berkeley, like they're doing some great things right, right, with no right. student debt, but as they're doing their homework, they're pulling out their cell phones and they're, they're kind of like doing all their work on, the, on Google Docs. I'm like, yo, th- this is wrong. We need to make sure that you have technology to be fully equipped to actually make sure that you're getting to where you want to go. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Do you believe that uh, technology is the key to access? I believe that technology is the key to access. There, again, l- let us take all the computers away in this room right now. Where are we at? Yeah. Let 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 the hospital go without 
all the technology. Let's take all the wires out. What will right. happen then? Mm. You know how many lives will be lost without technology right now? Yeah. This right here is the, the epic center of everything. No matter who you are, which industry you're in, I'm meeting everybody. We have surgeons come to us. We have teachers. We have entrepreneurs. We have people from the low to the high all needing this technology. Right. And that's why we're taking technology and we're kind of like, a, I like to blackmail the nonprofits to work to each other. Mm. And people are like, well, what do you mean you want to blackmail nonprofits? Within the entrepreneur space, we work together. We share ideas. We share resources. But when it comes to nonprofits, we're so, oh, this is mine. Yeah. Mm. This is mine. Yeah. I can't share with you. Right, right. So what I say, you know what we're going to do? I'll give you a computer lab. Mm. And when it breaks, we'll fix it. And then when it comes obsolete, we'll replace it at no cost to wow. you. Mm. But when this other smaller nonprofit who has no space but have great programming wants to use your lab, right. you give it to them for free. Wow. wow. I know that's right. Mm -hmm. We force nonprofits to work together because that's the only way we're going to fully have an impact within our communities. Mm. Lady Ashdod, you need to contact this young brother, man, so we can connect him <laughs> with Project Steam, our 501c3, right there. That's exactly what we do. But you know what? You hooked up with the right person. Shout out to Antoine out there yes, because sir. he has been connecting uh, those who uh, need a voice in their platform uh, like yourself for people to know. That's the problem, I believe. That's why we created Project Steam because we understood really early that when it comes to nonprofits, most of the things first are what they lack in is money. Secondly is exposure. We're able to create that platform and give them that platform for them to be um, highlighted and have a, a voice in the platform to speak. So, um, you know, you you so you've been all over the place now. Obviously, you came to our show, but this wasn't the first show you've been to. You know, I heard you was in front of the sharks. The sharks, man. Yeah, yeah that was sharks. So let's talk a little bit about. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about you know Shark Tank right there. I mean, you appeared in Shark Tank. Do you remember what season you were on? Um, we we was just um aired this eleventh season where the um third episode I believe it was. Wow. Um, so we just aired two weeks ago. And mm. what was the focus? What what did what was your pitch? So our focus was pitching this idea of scaling our IT company. Right. See, there's no big IT company that's fully scaled across the country. Now everybody mentioned Geek Squad and they're thinking they're doing the great things, but honestly, right. their customer services actually have been doing really bad things recently yeah, that's and true. they become um the fits all for everybody mm -hmm. so i'll fit your refrigerator i'll fit your microwave i'll fit right, that right. that's not an it company anymore it's a best buy company yeah. mm -hmm. so what we say is we're going to make this company go nationwide and the way we're going to do it is we take mobile offices which are ambulances convert it into a mobile office and we're going to start franchising these out to individuals from underserved communities <laughs> And what, what are they serving? Where well, they're gonna go to different locations like banks, hospitals, universities, they're gonna serve these individuals, but to help make sure that they definitely have um, stuff coming in, we created this kiosk similar to a, a Amazon Dropbox, where you go in, let's say you come into work at 10 o'clock in the morning, you drop off your device, your broken screen, your virus removal, whichever have you, and then by the time lunchtime happens, it's ready for pickup. So mm. instead of leaving work early, taking leaving work late or taking extended lunch breaks while you're at work doing what you got to do your stuff is being repaired oh, and we want to make sure that we're scaling this across the country our first, we're planning on um, pitch, uh, pushing out our first 10 kiosk uh, I believe at the end of Q1 so mm -hmm. sometime in the spring and then um, over the next five years we want to create over um, 200 kiosks throughout the tri-state area mm -hmm. and as we're doing it again we want to make sure that we're teaching underserved youth or um, yeah, underserved youth, how to actually learn the tech skills and then be able to service these kiosks. And their goal is, hey, after you get to this level tier, like you can show that you can run a business, you can um, do the technical repair, you can do the customer service, we'll then give you your own franchise. I'm not charging you for this. You Here's your ambulance, it's yours. Your motherboard is yours. Go out there and you service these kiosks. And these kiosks are going to yield each 60 plus thousand dollars a year. And that's mm -hmm. doing a minimum of two repairs a day. So, so mm, interesting, because I was going to ask the business model behind that. How does that make money? And is that something that becomes um, kind of like, you know, I, I'm not sure if this is the right term, but is this a kind of like a sole kind of proprietorship or is this a franchise? So it's going to turn into a franchise operation. In the okay. beginning, um, it's me. I'm the 100% owner of Dirty Now. I want to bring in other partners to actually start pushing this mission a little bit further. Okay. And, a lot of people are honestly thinking what I'm doing is dumb. They're like, yo, Ooh. for the past three years, you, you donated 300 computers? 
that first year, once you're working out of an apartment, you have no sex. You just got a new baby. You, mm-hmm. How are you going to do this? But if you focus on what, what everybody else can do mm-hmm. and what they think you can do, you'll get nowhere. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not concerned about what you can or can't do or what you think I can't do. Mm-hmm. My, that laptop changed my life, so we're here to change lives. I'm an entrepreneur because of the community made the entrepreneur within me, so I want to make sure that I'm, I'm creating other entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. We're on this two-year plan where we want to create 50 jobs throughout the tri-state area in addition to creating five social good entrepreneurs, meaning they own their own franchises throughout the Tri-State area. They're serving these kiosks, and they're also giving back to the community, which has given so much to them. Hmm. Interesting. So what was the end result from the Sharks? What was, what were, what was their position? Um, what were, one, their concern, then what was, I guess, their like aha moment as it relates to this? All right, so I'm going to jump the gun and just say we didn't get a deal. Okay. And everyone's okay. like, oh. Right, right, right. What? But then they, they would tweet. We had all the Sharks tweeting how this was some of the the best pitch they've ever saw, period. The Sharks are telling us, like, see, what everybody saw was six minutes or eight minutes of mm-hmm. us just talking. Right, right. But what was really there was us talking to the Sharks for like an hour and a half. Wow. And there was multiple times where Mark um, uh, Mark Cuban would say, Mark Cuban's like you. I started my first business at 12. Mark Cuban's like you. I opened the bar. Mark Cuban's like you. Man, I'm in the tech field. I love what you're doing. You're just too early. Keep going. You can do it without me. Damon John said, my man, you don't need computers. It's it's great. I did the same thing when I was um, creating food, but I was just giving back to my community. Right. That's me as the entrepreneur. But as an investor, I can't do that. Right. I, I understand what you're doing. Now, I feel the passion. Today, you're too small. You're giving away too much, yeah. and I don't want to lose my money. Yeah. Keep doing they that thing. want to make money. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I can see that. They, like, they, yeah. they, they think this is more service-oriented. They, they, say, they saw yeah. it being too much of a social good, which, yeah, yeah. which is great. It's yeah. okay. But all, across the board, Lori loved us. Man, Hick, like everybody loved us. Um, Mr. Wonderful, he was like, it's just a key. It's a, it's a refrigerator. <laughs> like, For yeah. computers, that's mm-hmm. funny. Yeah, see, the funny thing is what people didn't know, 48 hours before, um, I'm sorry, two weeks before, we got to the sharks. I didn't even have a prototype. Wow. Wow. But I lived in China for five years. And during mm. that time, I was able to have a lot of contacts. I worked for an import expert company. I remember um, calling some friends. I'm like, hey, I need one of these here in the next 48 hours. So they got one here from China in 48 hours. Wow. I then took it to another shop to get it wrapped within the next week. And then we put it onto the truck and drove across the country. Wow. Fantastic. And when we got in front of the sharks, 10 minutes before the show was about to air, they were like, all right, cool. Powered it on. I'm like, all right, cool. I turned it on, and my man, it was in Russian. I was like, oh, geez, no. <laughs> what are we going to do right now? Right, right. Luckily, I know, I know enough about computers. I was able to put a nerd and a logo on there. And okay. to this point, it was nothing but an empty box. It was a refrigerator. Oh, okay. But all across the board, they said um, they love what we're doing. Um, you're too early, but you can do it without us. Don't give up 20% of your company. Do oh, fantastic. it. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. 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 Um, time flies, man. Before we uh, let you go, I want to make sure that we get all of your information out there. How can uh, we get in contact with you, all the people who's watching, all our viewers, uh, you know, the listeners? How can they get in contact with you or see or learn what you're doing or maybe be a part of this whole new initiative? Cool. So the easy ways to contact us, um, you find us on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, you can look up Nerd It Now or you can look up myself, Marquis Gideon. Right. Or you could give us a call. We're located in Wilmington, Delaware at 302-283-9871. Again, you visit our website, www.nerditnow.com, and you just give us a call. Let us know what you're trying to do. For We're trying to move into the Philadelphia area right now, not only with business, but for a nonprofit, too, because we realize that Wilmington isn't the only underserved community. There's some here in Philly. There's some in Ghana. There's some in Kenya. There's some in Trinidad. There's some everywhere. We want to make sure that we're making this splash worldwide. I know that's right. Quick question. Um, What would you say to that 12-year-old that's sitting in school and they're taking things apart, but, you know, just as you did and putting them back together, but they're being told by someone like you're not college material. You, you know, you should maybe go to trade school or something like that. Like what is your, your advice you would offer them? Young brother and young sister focus on possibility versus probability. Mm-hmm. If I say right now, 40,000 people apply to Shark Tank, but only 50 of them are aired each year. That probability sounds very mm-hmm. disheartening. Like, nope. Mm-hmm. But when you focus on a possibility, what's already promised to us, like you were just mentioning in the beginning of the show, everything, regardless of religion, you uh, f- practice, everything says you throw it into the atmosphere, it comes back That's to you. That's right. Mm-hmm. You just got to claim it. But what nobody ever say is claiming it is going to be easy. 
Mm-hmm. Brother, sister, focus on possibility. It's yours. I know yeah. that's right. Wonderful. I don't even want to go past that because that was a great <laughs> kind of like ending piece sound clip. But I do want to ask, uh, what, wh- who, who inspires you? Who's your, who's somebody when you wake up in the morning, you like, like, I appreciate, I, like, yeah, I not necessarily want to be like them, but kind of get you up and say like, yo, I got to do that. There are so many different people. I cannot n- name one person. Right, right. My family, my mother, my father, they yes. didn't graduate from high school, yeah. but they fought for their three kids. Yeah, Though they fought. weren't together, they fought. Mm-hmm. When I look at that teacher, they fought. The, the community, honestly, it, it's the community that I see makes me fight. So when I see people who aren't doing good, but I see people who came from that community doing great, that's my inspiration to be the best me for the community that's made me. Mm. Mm. Fantastic, man. Wow. Yeah, I, it's, not, it's nothing else left to be said on it. I think you, you had some... What, what would you want, you know, everybody, you know, who's listening, seeing? I mean, because we, we're reaching out all the way out in, I believe in Ghana, mm-hmm. who's, who has been watching and listening to the show. What would you say to those, um, you know, who, who are interested and sometimes feel like quitting and giving up, you know, and this is too hard. I can't, you know, will I ever succeed? What would you tell that person? Go to YouTube mm-hmm. and find my TEDx talk called okay. Find Your China. Mm. I'm not talking about your China dish. I'm not talking about necessarily moving to China. Right. But find those limitations that are being imposed onto you. That limitation, is, it's a barrier. Get over that limitation. Right. Follow your passion. Find your China for that's where you're going to find your true you. Mm. And that's when things are really going to start happening. Wow. Mm. The irony is we had roughly... I don't know, maybe Antoine can kind of like tally some of these numbers, but we have roughly about 250, 300 guests since we started this show. What would you, what would you count? Close to that, three, about two, 250. I have never had anyone on the show that I believe was as inspiring. And I think that you are, you, 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 you blessed. And I think you got to continue doing what you're doing because you're going to touch and help so many people. Um, And it's imperative that you continue to go. And it's imperative and it's our obligation to make sure that you succeed with that. That's what we do here. We talk weekly. So we promise we'll make that um, obligation to us, that promise that if you need us for anything that will make sure that we jump on. I salute everything that you guys doing. Yeah. Keep doing the thing for the community. Nothing but love here. Yeah. And just know as much as you say you want to help uplift what I'm doing, any way I can help li- uplift what you guys are doing at the same time. We yeah. here. It, it's a community effort well to make this thing happen. There you go. Well, we're going to have to talk some, about hey. some apps after this then. What about you, classy lady? You got me speechless. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> we still got like a minute or so. I, I one question sure. What's and up? you you pretty much answered it it's you growing up in Wilmington Delaware and you seen some you know a lot of things in your community what made you not go other than what your story about the teachers like what made you not take that wrong road when you see other people doing some great things out there you realize that this is within our reach and honestly my dad he taught me like um, though I make glass for a living, he was working at Safely at the time. He said, "There's so much more for you in this world. Everything that you think you want, it's yours. You just got to really focus on that." Again, it's a lot to deal with my faith. My faith tell me it's more. It's not mine. I just got to claim it. God said it is yours. Wow. Claim it. Fantastic. Claim it. Claim we want to claim this thing right here. We talk weekly. We always <laughs> claiming, and we want you to claim too. What's going on, you guys? This is Bridget Kelly, and you are locked into We Talk Weekly. 